Hi everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar and welcome to Chemistry Tutorials. And today we have another lesson for you. This is Atomic Structure. In the last lesson series, we did Solid State and now we are going to be doing Atomic Structure. This is going to be a huge lesson. So I've divided that into 13 different parts. Some parts will be very small like this one. Some parts will be bigger. And today we're going to be doing part one of the 13 part series. And this is the ancient Greek and Dalton's model of atoms. Now what we need to understand is atomic structure is huge because the concept of an atom started late in the, in, in, in the 5th century BC. So from there it has traveled a long distance and different different models have come, different different theories have been proposed. So it is very very important in this lesson to explore the history behind the even the concept of an atom and that is exactly what we're going to start with we're going to start with the ancient greek concept of atom now that idea that all matter is made up of tiny indivisible particles or atoms is believed to have originated with the greek philosopher lucipus of miletus i think i got it right i hope i got it right and his student Democritus, that was easier, of Abdera in the 5th century BC. So can you imagine the first theory came in the 5th century BC where they talked about the concept of atoms. And to, the way we pronounce this word atoms today, it comes from the word atomos, that is in Greek, which means indivisible. So obviously their idea was you cannot break it further down. That is the smallest piece of matter. But the very fact that they could think like this without doing any experiment, which was completely hypothetical, itself talks about the greatness of these people. Now these thinkers believed that in addition to being too small to be seen, unchangeable and indestructible, atoms were also completely solid with no internal structure and came in an infinite variety of shapes and sizes which accounted for the different kinds of matter. So they did not even restrict themselves to believe that atoms were spheres. They said they can come in various shapes and sizes, the very reason why different matters have various shapes, especially solids. So, and they are different sizes because there are different, different types of material and everything is because of the fact that they have different shapes and sizes. But remember, they are supposed to be solids. Basically, an atom was supposed to be a solid at that time. It had nothing inside it. There was no internal structure to it. And whatever it was the difference in different matters was because of the fact that the atoms had different shapes and sizes. Color, taste and other intangible qualities were also thought to be composed of atoms due to their infinite characteristics. Now, while the atom, the concept of atom was supported by many of the later Greek philosophers, it was staunchly and surprisingly opposed by Aristotle, who argued against the very existence of such particles. He said there is nothing called atom. Everything is as it is. It is created that way. So a liquid is created like a liquid. A solid is created like a solid. Different solids are different because they are created like that. And it's not that they are made up of something called an atom. Now, during the Middle Ages, people were highly influenced by Aristotle ideas. So the Roman Catholic theologians were heavily influenced by Aristotle's ideas and so atomic philosophy was largely dismissed for centuries. And can you beat it? 5th century BC, somebody gives you an idea. People even after that for a while, for about two or three centuries more, still talk about the atom. Aristotle says it is not logical. There's nothing called an atom. And from that point onwards, for the next 18 centuries, nothing happened on the model of an atom, even the theory or the existence of an atom. The first theory came after the Greek theory was in 1803. So for the next 18 centuries, and I'm talking about 18 centuries, nothing really happened. So 1800 years, nothing happened. But un unwittingly, the fact that Aristotle was opposed to this idea was the very reason why the idea still remained. So however, the concept of the atom survived unwittingly due to Aristotle's staunch opposition to it because every time he would write anything about matter, he would criticize the idea and that criticism kept the idea alive. And then let's crush that. And then came the Dalton's model of atom proposed in 1803 by an English chemist and physicist 
this theory of atomic composition was hypothesized and partially confirmed by experiments by the english chemist and physicist john dalton in 1803 now dalton came with his atomic theory as a result of his research and experiments into gases so here comes the first model which has some basis in the form of experiments now his findings led him to hypothesize that elements combine at the atomic level in fixed ratios that's a big deal this ratio would naturally differ in compounds due to the unique atomic weights of elements being combined so his idea was atoms are different because of their atomic weights and they combine in fixed ratios so when water is made up of uh, different different uh, elements then those elements will always combine in fixed proportions to yield water irrespective of how you create it now pure elements consist of particles called atoms and atoms are indivisible but remember today we know that atoms have a uh, lot of things inside them like electrons protons and neutrons we are not even going into the nucleus called nucleons as far as the atom is concerned we are we are okay with electrons protons and neutrons so the fact that pure elements consist of particles called atoms and atoms are indivisible that was actually not true in fact most of what dalton proposed uh were against the principle that we know today but the fact that he proposed these ideas were the backbone of the future models now all the atoms of an element are same that was his proposal but we know isotopes exist so their atomic number being same the mass is not same so they are not same in all respects atoms of different elements are different and their difference is because of their atomic weights that was logic of dalton but today we know it's not atomic weights in fact even mendeley believed atomic weights but today we believed it is not atomic weight it is atomic number that makes atoms differ from each other and atoms of different elements combine to form chemical compound which is absolutely fine atoms can neither be created nor destroyed they can only be regrouped for a long time it was assumed that mass cannot be destroyed or created well it can be destroyed at least and hypothetically created because we know radioactivity we know nuclear fission and fusion where mass is not conserved and if mass is not conserved the atoms are not conserved elements can change into another elements in radioactivity and therefore this basic idea of dalton most of his ideas uh, weren't working but the fact that he gave them and the fact that he had some basis in the form of experiments was itself a very very big achievement so that is the end of this part of the video this is part 1 where we briefly discussed the ancient greek model and we talked about the dalton's model of an atom in the next video we're going to talk about the discovery of electrons how electrons were discovered so we're going to talk about that in part 2 if you have any questions queries doubts anything that you would like to comment on please drop them in the comment section below if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do subscribe to this channel you will get more lesson videos of various various lessons of physical chemistry organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry it takes time to create these videos so i'm going to be doing them slowly but all of them would come and if you subscribe you get the intimation of all those videos the moment i post them on youtube in case you like this video please do not forget to hit the like button this is kalyan kumar signing off have a great day and thank you for watching